the World Trade Organization. World Trade Organization is an organization that intends to supervise and liberalize international trade. It is the only global international organization dealing with the rules of trade between nations. It has 153 member states, composed of founder members and subsequent members. WTO purpose was to facilitate international bargaining and to reduce its barriers to trade. Who WTOR? WTO supports the needs of a developing country and operates a global system of trade rules. It acts as a forum for negotiating trade agreements and settles trade disputes between its members. What WTO do? All major decisions are made by the WTO's member government. What WTO stands for? A number of simple, fundamental principles form the foundation of the multilateral trading system. Benefits of WTO The system promotes peace, disputes are handled constructively, free trade cuts the cost of living, trade raises income, and trade stimulates economic growth. Under its 153 members, Djibouti is one of the 153 countries who participated in the World Trade Organization who became a member since May 31, 1995. Djibouti serves as an important transshipment location for goods. Djibouti can be divided up into major regions, the coastal plain, the volcanic plateaus, and the mountain ridges. In this presentation, we will discuss the Trade Policy Review of Djibouti. This report has been drawn up by the WTO Secretariat on its own responsibilities. It is divided into four parts. The first part of this presentation discusses its economic environment. There are several main features of the economy. These are Djibouti is a least developed country with a population of 820,000 distributed over an area of 23,000 square kilometers. Djibouti has an essentially dual economy. The services sector such as transport and related logistic services forms the basis of the national economy. In 2011, services contributed about three quarters of national GDP generated by manufacturing industries, agriculture, and construction and public works. International trade remains fundamental for Djibouti given its heavy reliance on imports. Despite an improvement in its economic governance indicators and a stable monetary regime, Djibouti does not yet attract sufficient FDI to areas other than port activities. FDI stands for Foreign Direct Investment. FDI is an investment made by a company or individual in one country in business interest in another country in the form of either establishing business operations. Foreign Direct Investment comes mainly from the Gulf countries, the leading investors being Dubai, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia. FDI flows grew continuously between 2006 in 2008, particularly in the port services before dropping sharply in 2010 in the wake of the financial crisis. Djibouti and its prospects In 2007, the government adopted the National Initiative for Social Development or INDS, which is Djibouti's Development and Poverty Reduction Strategy Paper. The overriding aims to promote growth, competitiveness and employment, access to core social services, the reduction of poverty and vulnerabilities, and public governance. The first version, which covered the period 2008 to 2012, had a number of shortcomings, including the lack of monitoring and evaluation mechanism, weak financing, and a failure to prioritize the different elements of the program. The current version of the INDS covers the period 2011 to 2015 
efforts have been made to avoid the shortcomings of the first version, and in fact, the action have been prioritized. However, designing an effective monitoring and evaluation tool seems to pose a serious challenge to the success of the program. There is a discussion held in connection with this version of the INDS and a plan of action entitled a Strategy for Accelerated Growth and Employment Creation, or called ISCAPE, is scheduled for 2015 to 2019 and is expected to focus on growth sectors with a view to increasing the diversification of the economy. This second part of the presentation discusses the trade and investment regime of Djibouti. The 1992 Constitution of the Republic of Djibouti provides for the separation of powers and guarantees fundamental rights. Since the last review of Djibouti's trade policy, there have been several changes to the Constitution. These changes include the creation of a new entity for a non-renewable five-year term, the introduction of provisions permitting the formation of political party groupings, and provisions that grant greater autonomy to local authorities. Other changes include a reduction in the presidential term of office from 6 to 5 years and an age limit of 75 years for presidential candidates. A requirement that parliamentary debates be published and be recorded in the official journal except in specific circumstances. A ban on members of the government taking up the parliamentary, public or professional offices and the changes in the duration and date of parliamentary sessions. Under executive authority, the President of the Republic is elected for a five-year term by direct universal suffrage in a majority vote over two rounds. He is eligible for re-election and he must be a Djiboutian nationality and be in possession of his civic and political rights and be at least 40 and no more than 75 years old on the date when he registers his candidacy. Under legislative authority, the Parliament National Assembly is elected by direct universal suffrage for a renewable six-year term. In judicial system, the Supreme Court is the highest authority for the jurisdiction in the Republic followed by the Court of Audit which is responsible for monitoring Republic finances and other courts. Under the Philippine judicial system, in the Philippines, it's mixed legal system of civil, common, Islamic, and customary law. While Djibouti judicial system is largely inspired by the French legislation, laws are codified law, Sharia, Islamic law, and customary law and civil law inherited the French Napoleon. Since 2012, the Deputy Minister with Special Responsibility for Trade, SMES, Handicrafts, Tourism, and Formalization in the Ministry of the Economy and Finance has been in charge of foreign trade. In 2009, a National Trade Negotiations Committee, CNNSC, was established under the Ministry Responsible for Trade. Its objectives are to analyze the implications of trade negotiations conducted at the bilateral, regional, and multilateral level. Define a negotiating position which is coherent and consistent with development policy aspirations and ensure the implementation of existing regional and international commitments. And assist the government with the design, formulation, and implementation of trade policy. The government consults the Djibouti Chamber of Commerce on all trade-related matters, but is not obliged to follow its advice. Djibouti's trade policy is intended to promote diversification of the domestic production system, with a larger private sector contribution to GDP, excluding port activities, an increased share of the secondary sector, and business formalization and structuring. Trade Agreements and Arrangement in WTO DG Boti is an original member of the WTO and grants at least evident treatment to all of its trading partners. DG Boti has always had difficulties in fulfilling its certification application. 
including the areas of agriculture, trips, trims agreement, import licensing, quantitative restriction, basic main inspection, customs valuation, customs duties, imports, legislation on anti-dumping, countervailing and safeguard measures, subsidies, state trading enterprises, trade in services, and technical barriers to trade. There are other agreements and arrangements like Djibouti being a member of the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, or COMESA. COMESA has 19 member states. The COMESA agenda is to deepen and broaden the integration process among member states. Djibouti Investigy Institutional and Legal Framework The Trade and Company Register is the responsibility of the Djibouti Office of Industrial Property and Commerce or DPIC. This investment code continues to operate as the principal legal framework for investment in Djibouti. Business Environment Djibouti has highlighted the following advantage in its bid to attract its PI. It offers a high level of personal security, a strategic geographic location, and the stability of its currency, which is pegged to the United States dollar. The third part of this presentation discusses the trade policy and practices by measures. First measure is measures directly affecting imports. Under these are customs and procedures and regulation wherein it says that any natural or legal person of Djiboutian or foreign nationality may engage in business activities, including importation. And it is also stated that Djiboutian has been using a Sikuta word since January 2013 and all imports declarations have been made electronically since 2005. Tariffs and other duties and taxes also affecting imports. Since 2008, Djibouti has been levying back in addition to the other TIC excise duty, a special solidarity tax, a tax on petroleum product, a business license fee, and a general solidarity tax. And also, Djibouti used the 2007 version of the Harmonized Commodity Description and Coding System, with a tariff schedule consisting of 6,904 eight-digit lines. There are also other duties and taxes such as bound duties, internal consumption tax, general solidarity tax, and other taxes includes VAT, excise duty, and other internal taxes. Duty and tax exception is also included as directly affecting imports. It says that exception and concessions may be granted under ratified international agreements called Vienna Convention or pursuant to provision in the investment code and those on free zones or under agreements with certain companies such as railway company. In addition, Djibouti allows exemption from customs duties and taxes on imports by foreign military bases stationed in Djibouti. Imports prohibitions, restriction and licensing. The imports of toxic or hazardous substances requires a special authorization from the ministry responsible for the environment. Cattle feed still requires an authorization from ministry responsible for trade and industry which also issues licenses and importing cut. Sanitary and phytosanitary requirements. The imports and export of animal products still requires the submission of the sanitary certificate issued by the Directorate responsible for livestock and veterinary services. In accordance with the legislation on consumer protection, if there is a known risk, an order may prohibit the manufacture or marketing of food products for a period not exceeding one year. Second measure is measures directly affecting exports, procedures, taxes and other export levies, export prohibitions, restrictions and licensing, export promotion, financing, insurance and guarantees, and the free zones are the measures that directly affecting exports. Third measure is measures affecting production and trade. These are the incentives, 
competition policy and price controls, state trading, state-owned enterprises, and privatization, government procurement, and intellectual property rights. The last part of the presentation discuss the trade policies by sector. First sector is agriculture. It has principal subsectors, the crop and animal production and fishing. Second is mining and energy sector. Salt is still the major mining resource being exploited in Djibouti. And electricity and petroleum products are under the energy sector. Third is the manufacturing sector. There have been no developments affecting the framework of the manufacturing sector since the last review. They mainly consist of agri-food and cement producing units and other artisanal activities. Fourth sector is services. Its first subsector is financial services which includes banks and insurances. Its second subsector is telecommunication and portal services. Government is the objective of developing telecommunication activities. However, concrete measures to achieve these objectives is slow in being adopted. Fifth sector is transport. Its subsectors are maritime transport, road transport, rail transport, and air transport. The lack of consistent strategy for the development of transport services and logistics is a serious obstacle.